Good evening, guys. And thank you very much for joining. This is your class number 16, your last class. So I'm so happy for you. Give me a second, I'm going to share my screen first. Bear with me. There we go. And let me open up here the presentation. Presentation. So I said that today we're going to talk about inversion, right? And we are going to discuss, you know, a little bit. Uh, Ah, okay, Rafael Antonio. Thank you very much for letting me know. Sí, eso, eso estaba viendo ahorita que vi el teléfono. Thank you. I'm going to text him right now. Just bear with me. Mm. Let me see. No one more. Okay, very good. Let me go ahead and pass the attendance first. Okay, let me see. Bye. Okay, Alba Dir Portal Diaz. Alvadir Portal Díaz. Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present teacher. Thank you. Eh, give me a sec. Ana Francisca García Nieto. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Present. Thank you. Eh, Diego Anthony Melendez Mayen. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Oh, but Eliu is right now having problems. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Eh, Francisco Antonio Sánchez Joven. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Person. Thank you. Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Eh, Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present teacher. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present teacher. Thank you. María Azucena Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you, Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Nady Ibis Mendez Albeño. 
Present, teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you. Uh, Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Rosa María del Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you. Uh, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you, Jensi Marlene León López. And Zulma Beatriz Pérez Caldames. Present. Thank you so much. Okay, very good. So, um, well, first of all, thank you for joining. Um, the only thing is that first I need to begin with the um, with the exam, right? So I'm going to go very quickly through the exam. And after that, I'm going to uh, go ahead and um, let you know, right? Uh, once we uh, move to the other two topics that you mentioned yesterday. So first, let's open up here the platform. Dice, uh, ya voy, ya voy, Sandra y Diego. Solo denme un momentito. Eh, I'm going to open up here the platform. We're going to check the exam very quickly, and then we are going to go back to the other topics, okay? Ahorita voy. Dice Sandra, Patricia. I'm in traffic at the listening, okay? And Diego Anthony. Diego Anthony Melendez. Ahorita lo agrego, Diego. Permito. Diego Anthony Melendez. Ahí está. Thank you very much. Ok, ahí está cargando ahorita. Démosle un momentito. Ok. Eh, guys, por cierto, me escuchan bien. Es que fíjense que no sé si es que hay como problema de conexión. Pero... Yes. Uh -huh. Ok. Todo bien entonces, right? Yes. Yeah. Ok, cool. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Wow, it's taking forever. <laughs> Sorry, guys. As I was saying before, that's the reason why I was asking you because, I mean, things are getting, uh, are taking longer than expected. I'm just checking that everything with the connection is okay. But if you say that you can listen to me well, so I'm glad to know that. Bye. So after, you know, uh, the, all the sections, right, that we had the different four sections, aquí está el reading que les decía, do you remember? I was telling you that the reading, you know, I didn't include that in the during the class because the reading was already included as an exercise. So uh, what did we did uh, through the exam? Well, we have different sections. Section number one was dedicated uh, to a listening section, right? So the instructions were listen to the conversation between two tourists and then check for true or false, right? Um, whenever, you know, pieces of advice that I can give whenever we move to listening sections is number one, you have to read the questionnaire. You have to um, get familiar with the pieces of, of information that you need to look for, right? That is going to help you to have uh, a better idea on what information you need to check on, right? Uh, what else? Well, 
pay attention to keywords. Now that you already know, right, what the questions are, then you have to pay attention to keywords so you can find that information that you need to complete, right? Then in section two, we have combined sentences. So you were having some problems with this one, actually with this, this exercise together, uh, one of these days during the class. And what we were uh, putting into practice was the defining and non-defining relative clauses that we have, right? And we were saying that the difference between defining and non-defining relative clauses is that the defining relative clauses, they give important information and you need to include it, right? To specify what you're talking about, okay? On the other hand, when we are talking about a non-defining relative clauses, that is extra information, right? That um, that we can uh, include, meaning that I can omit that information from the sentence, right? Now, uh, what else? Here, we need to pay attention to the combination, right? And whether or not that's important information for me. Why? Because if it's not important information for me, I can decide to go ahead and just omit it, right? And if it's not possible, uh, if it's important, so I will leave it there, right? So it depends on you. It it is uh, it depends on the perspective that you take, right? After that, you have to complete sentences, right? And we were uh, discussing a little bit of um, vocabulary words related to cities, right? Or a place to live. Um, here we have different, you know, uh, sections. We have cost of living, green spaces, nightlife, climate, shopping, transportation system, right? So there are several things that um, were included, several vocabulary words that were included in that material. So what you had to do is just to match the word to the sentence. And this one we did it together too. And then in letter D, you have to work with choosing the best word that fit within the sentence, right? So instructions choose the word that best complete each sentence, right? So here we have some phrases that we were studying, right? In one of our classes, we have uh, as soon as, since, after, um, until, while, right before, ever since, whenever, from, uh, from the moment, etc. Right? Also, uh, we discussed uh, these vocabulary words related to sleep, right? Or sleeping, okay? And uh, I, from, for this particular exercise, I didn't receive any questions, right? Meaning that everything was clear. And then the last part was a reading. So the instructions were to read the travel brochure, uh, brochure, right? Then check true or false for each statement, right? So you have to read the brochure and, and to select if it was true or false. So that was, you know, all the exam. And the reason why I am mentioning this is because whenever we get to the last date of the course, right? We need to mention the exam and its different parts. And if there is, I don't think, there is, but if there is someone who hasn't finished, then we answer questions on that day, okay? So, but so far, what I understood from the message that Flor um, Iglesias shared in the WhatsApp group, I understand that all of you have already finished, okay? All of you have already finished with the material that uh, you were supposed to, right? So in that case, uh, the only thing that I that I have uh, left were, you know, the prepositions that uh, Elu mentioned yesterday, right? And also inversion. Now for inversion, right? Uh, I don't have material to show because I just found, you know, the material that I shared with you yesterday, right? 
and uh, the presentations that I have, unfortunately, I can share them because they do not belong to Inglés Corporativo, right? Como es un tema que no sé, que casi nadie lo ve, right? No, no, están, no están incluidas en, en ese material. So very quickly, uh, Marce, I think it was you, right? The one that had the, the questions. If you want, we're going to check some examples, right? And I don't know if you had time uh, to read uh, some of the information that I shared with you yesterday. Marce? Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me see. You want that I read the examples? Mm -hmm. You read the examples. Okay, very good. And let me see, where are you guys? Level. I see one. Hardly had. Hardly had. We arrived at the hotel when there was a power cut. There is a one stand. Mm -hmm. Give me one moment. I'm going to um, open the first one. And it's going to be Okay, there we go. Bye. So first, let's begin with the usage, right? So the topic is inversion, okay? So what is inversion? Well, we use this as it says in the material. If you can go please to your material in the WhatsApp group, go to this section. Let me see, go to this file. Is it the way it's not? This one. Okay. Uh, go to the chat and I already uh, mentioned, right, the material that I'm using right now. Sandra Patricia se le está activando el micrófono constantemente. Sandra, me escucha. Es que se lo, se lo desactivo y se le vuelve a activar. Sandra Patricia, me escucha. Bueno, espero que no se devuelva a activar. So we use inversion as it says right, there in several different situations in English, right? Inversion just means putting the verb before the subject. Eso es todo, okay? So let's go ahead and set it here. What is inversion? Inversion is uh, putting, oops, sorry. Putting the verb, okay? Putting the verb before the subject, right? So that's it. S was inversion, okay? Putting the verb before the subject. So the examples that we have there, right? So let's take a look at the first example, okay? It says the normal sentence, right? You are tired. The subject, it's you, and it's before the verb are, right? The question form, are you tired, right? The verb are, before the subject you, it's the right position for the verb be, right? So they have changed places. This is called inversion. Now, generally guys, inversion, it's going to be uh, something that we will see in questions, right? Entonces, if I say you are tired, right? And then the question, are you, tired oops are you tired okay if you see it, it it is the same situation it is describing en la situación que se está de, describiendo acá verdad if you don't want to put it like this you can say to put the verb before the subject entonces here i have the verb and then i have the subject right pero lo curioso de estas de esta, de estas eh, de estas oraciones chicos es que no estoy hablando de preguntas sin embargo toman la posición de pregunta right or at least the order of the subject and verb it's of a question right 
So it says in most English verb tenses, when we want to use inversion, we just move the verb to before the subject, right? If there's more than one verb, because a verb tense auxiliary uh, has auxiliary verbs, for example, we moved the verb first, okay? These are two verbs, or there are two verb tenses where we just change the places of the verb in subjects, right? Si es present simple with the verb be, es am I, are you, is he. If it's past simple, it's were you, was she. And the same happens, you know, with all the tenses, right? And we already know that because pretty much what we do is um, um, to change that in the question form. There are two tenses that we need to add, do or does. Right, so in this case, it's going to be the present simple and the past simple with did, right? So where do we use inversion? It says, of course, we use inversion in questions. O sea, toda la primera página, toda la página uno que ustedes ven en el, en el, en el documento, toda la primera página está hablando de preguntas, right? Questions. Now, take a look at the second page. Ahí ya vamos hablando de inversion which is, a, I would say, kind of formal, you know, a way to say certain things. Of course, we use inversion in questions, but also we use uh, inversion in other cases when we are not making questions. Y ahí es donde a veces nos confunde, right? So it makes us feel confused because I am not asking questions. I'm just saying a sentence. When we use a negative adverb, right? When we use a negative adverb or adverb phrase at the beginning of the sentence. For example, um, it says, seldom have I such beautiful, have I seen such beautiful work, right? So usually we put the expression at the beginning, right? At the beginning of the sentence and to emphasize what we are saying. Entonces, ¿todo esto de inversion para qué me sirve a mí? La palabra clave es esta. Emphasize. Oops. Yeah, emphasize. Right? Uh, what you're saying. What you're saying. That's when we use it. Ahí es donde lo usamos. If I want to emphasize what I'm saying, I'm going to use inversion. And it sounds very formal, right? Um, it makes our sentence sound surprising or striking or unusual, right? So in that case, right, if we move here, right, we have, um, let me see, number one, makes our sentence sound, sound, sound surprising, okay? Vamos a poner las características. Makes the sentence sound surprising. What else? Or striking, right? Striking. Striking or unusual, right? Unusual. Okay, very good, excellent. Y dígame, Marce. What means striking? Uh, striking. Yeah. Um, kind of surprising. Uh -huh. it's, yeah. it's, uh -huh. it's, a, it's a synonym. Mm -hmm. oh, thanks. You're welcome. And then pretty much what we are uh, saying is that we want to emphasize, we want people to, uh, you know, to make us, uh, or at least we want them to understand that we are surprised, but, uh, you know, that particular uh, characteristic or thing that I'm expressing, right? So then it says, oh, give me a sec. The websites are very, very slow. Ah, okay, aquí se lo busqué. So striking, based on the dictionary, it's llamativo, notable, o sorprendente, right? So that would be striking, right? Attracting attention by reason of being unusual, extreme, or prominent. Also, some uh, synonyms are noticeable, obvious, conspicuous, uh, conspicuous, I'm sorry, evident, salient, and visible, right? 
Uh, also, this word is the same word that we use for a strike in mind uh, in 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 um in a workplace, right? Of employees, creo que le llaman un, un paro, verdad? De labores. That's a strike. Mm -hmm. That is the same word that they use for that. Sandra Patricia se está activando la cámara y el y el video. Uh -huh. Then uh, we have here the, the next one. It says, um, it also sounds quite formal. Eso es otra característica, right? Es otra característica del, de, um, de la inversion. It's very formal. Very formal. Pero no formal en el sentido de que solo lo va a ocupar en un ensayo, en un reporte, en algo escrito. No. O sea, lo vas a escuchar de repente in speaking, you know, um, uh, way, right? So whenever you're talking, you can go ahead and use it as well. Um, then it also sounds quite formal. If you don't want to give the impression, uh, you can put the negative expression later in the sentence in a normal way, right? Uh, let's take a look at this one. It seldom have I seen such a beautiful work. Okay, seldom have I seen such beautiful work. Now, in this case, the right order, it's not this one. ¿Cuál sería el, el, orden, el orden de esta oración en una forma afirmativa? I've seen such a beautiful work. Exactly. I've seen such a beautiful work, but in that case, I'm even using, you know, this type of adverb because it's an adverb, actually. Seldom, it's an adverb of frequency, right? And I'm using an, uh, an adverb, right? In this case, if I want to use it with a present perfect form like this, right? Because generally we use it just with present simple, right? We go ahead and switch positions, right? And the order that I'm including in my sentence is going to be the order of a question, right? Have I seen such beautiful work? So if I just take this and add a question mark at the end, so that's a perfect question. Have I seen such beautiful work before, right? So in in and whenever you know I'm using inversion, that's going to sound like a question, but I'm not asking a question, right? So if you see, Right, the right order is going to be as you mentioned. I have seldom seen such beautiful work. Right, what is the meaning of seldom? Rara vez, verdad? I have seldom seen uh, such beautiful work. Seldom is in the, its normal place, right? We don't use inversion. This is a normal sentence with no special emphasis. Ok, entonces, si yo no quiero dar un, no quiero como que mi, 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 mi expresión o mi oración llame la atención, no le quiero dar ningún tipo de énfasis, no es mi objetivo, ¿verdad? Que, que sea notable. So I just say, I have seldom seen such beautiful work. But if I want to emphasize it, if I want to make it not noticeable, seldom have I seen such beautiful work, right? And we only use inversion when the adverb modifies the whole phrase, okay? So this is important to know. And guys, yo sé que tal vez no, he, no hemos visto eso, pero um, eh, por eso es que inversion no se ve en este curso, porque para poder ver inversion, tiene, tienen que ver primero este... Bueno, ya vieron las relative clauses, pero luego tienen que ver las adverb uh, phrases, ¿verdad? Habría que ver uh, también um, noun phrases, ¿verdad? Habría también que estudiar eh, un poquito más acerca de modificación al, al adverbio modificando acciones, right? So here, what I can say is that when we have a sentence, right, and we are able to identify one adverb, and if the adverb is modifying the complete phrase, Right, in this case, the noun phrase or the noun in the sentence. So then it's going to be, uh, we're going to be able to use inversion, right? There is an example there that says no inversion. Let's take a look at it. It says, hardly anyone passed the exam. 
okay? Hardly anyone passed the exam. If I say, um, if I say this, you know, in a different position, right? So can I do it, right? Because the thing is that hardly, it's not modifying the noun. Actually, it's telling me probably the amount uh, to make reference, you know, to the noun, which is anyone, right? But not specifically modifying the complete phrase, right? Look at what it says down below, hardly. Hardly had I got into bed when the telephone rang. Hmm, that's different. Why? Because hardly it's modifying, you know, that particular activity. And since it is an adverb of frequency, so what it's telling is that that time or that particular frequency, it's the, it's the one that I have for that activity, right? It's modifying the whole phrase. But in this one, it's not the case. So here I wouldn't be able to apply inversion, right? Then the next example, it's with never. Never had I, have I, never had she seen, I'm sorry, such a beautiful sight before. So that one, never, is una de las más comunes con inversion whenever we speak, right? Seldom, seldom do we have such an amazing display of dance. The only ones, si ustedes se recuerdan, las únicas que agregaban un auxiliary era present simple. ¿Y por qué present simple? Because for present simple, right, I need two auxiliaries. I need do and I need does, okay? And for past two, past simple, what is the auxiliary? The auxiliary that I need is did, right? So esos son los dos casos en los que yo voy a encontrar the auxiliaries, do, does, or did. Example, uh, seldom do we see such an amazing display on the, of dance. So, ¿qué hace do ahí? Well, I need to add it. Necesito agregarlo porque para presente simple, cuando yo quiero hacer una pregunta, primero va auxiliary. And then I have... Um, the subject, and after that I have the verb. That is the sequence. Esa es la secuencia para do or does. Same happens with did. Lo mismo pasa con did, right? Y ya lo van a ver más adelante. Eh, rarely will you hear such beautiful music. Porque will? Well, because the sentence is, you know, making reference uh, of will as future simple, but I'm using it in uh, the inverted way, meaning that it's going to have the position of a question. So pretty much will, it's becoming part of the auxiliary, even though the sentence is an affirmative one. Only then did I understand why the tragedy had happened. So yo no voy a decir only then I understood. No, because uh, what I'm doing here, it's adding the, 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 the order or organizing my sentence like if it was a question, even though it's not. So only then did I understand why the tragedy had happened. Weird, right? Not only does he love chocolate and sweets, but he also smokes, right? So same happens here, look. Not only does auxiliary auxiliary so does right it's going to be here he love okay verb so not only does he love chocolate but sweets and sweets i'm sorry but he love he also loves smokes right or he loves smoking for them then uh, past simple right in past simple we have the same situation i'm going to copy the sentence here Okay, you see, did, I'll say auxiliary, subject, and verb. Okay, same happens over here. I'm going to type it here. Seldom, auxiliary, subject, and verb do we see. And then we continue with the rest of the sentence, right? Uh, then we have, oops, then we have the next one. Uh, no sooner, had we arrived home, then the police ran the doorbell. 
scarcely had I got off the bus when it crashed into the back of a car. Only later did she really think about the situation, right? So what would be a, like the important things that I can say about inversion? Well, what I can say about inversion number one, learn the phrases, right? Learn the phrases. Example, there you have all, uh, the whole list, hardly, never, seldom, rarely, only then, not only but, no sooner, scarcely, only later, nowhere, little. Ese little did, did, did he know? Esa es la más famosa de todas las oraciones. Little did I know, ¿verdad? So only in this way, in no way, on no account, not until, not since, only after, uh, only when, and only by. Entonces, como yo tengo esa lista ahí, I know, yo sé que si yo estoy usando esa, es eh, uno de los adverbs de esa lista, y en la oración está modificando la frase completa o la frase nominal, entonces yo puedo aplicar inversion, right? So, then in point number two, Point number two, it says that we can use inversion instead of if, in conditionals with had, where, and should. This is quite formal. Esa es la segunda función. O sea, primero dijimos que usamos inversion para emphasize what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Que sea notable lo que estoy diciendo o enfatizarlo bastante, right? Pero, ¿cuál es la segunda? Okay, if you remember conditionals, todos los conditionals, ¿verdad? Tenemos ahí if, ¿verdad? If you, oops, if you do your homework, right, um, I'll, um, what, give you a treat, right? Te voy a dar, te voy a dar algo, da un dulce, I don't know. So we have these if clauses whenever we use conditionals, right? So the second use that we have for inversion, it's that, right? Uh, to use, use inversion, use inversion instead of if. In conditionals. In conditionals with conditionals with had, where, and should, ok, ¿cuál es la más famosa? Con should, con should es con, con la que más se, eh, lo he visto yo. So, the normal con conditional sentence would be, if I had been there, this problem wouldn't have happened. Condicional eh, tres, ¿verdad? Si yo hubiera estado ahí, ese problema no hubiera pasado. If I had, if I had been there, this problem wouldn't have happened. Right, so si yo aplico inversion, que esa es la forma, es una forma bien normal de que ustedes lo van a ver de repente en un libro, en un texto, etc. What is going to happen? Well, como tengo aquí present perfect, lo que va a pasar es que en vez de decir if I had been, voy a decir had I been there. This problem wouldn't have happened. So what we do is that we omit if and then we change the positions. Omitimos if y hacemos la inversión, ¿verdad? De had al principio, o sea, cambia el auxiliary y luego el subject pasa al segunda, en segunda posición, ¿ok? Another example, as you can see there, right? So, if we had arrived sooner, we could have prevented this tragedy. If we had arrived sooner, we could have prevented this tragedy. So, con la inversion, lo que voy a hacer es que elimino ese if y hago la inversión. Had we arrived sooner, we could have prevented this tragedy. Right? Uh, also, in, in section three, it says we can use inversion if we put an adverbial expression of place at the beginning on the sentence. This is also quite formal, formal or literary, right? For example, It says, on the table was all the money we had lost, right? Vamos a ver. On the table was all the money we had lost. And it says the normal sentence, all the money we have lost was on the table, right? This would be like, like the normal sentence, okay? 
Okay. And eh, round the corner came the nines. Si ustedes se fijan, aquí no estoy haciendo inversión con ningún verbo, sino que estoy haciendo la inversión, pero de la cláusula. O sea, de las oraciones o de los elementos que tengo dentro de la, dentro de la oración. Right? Eh, the knights came round the corner. Round the corner came the knights. All on the table was all the money we had lost. All the money we had lost was on the table. Si ustedes se fijan, nosotros nos iríamos por la segunda opción. Right? Porque es como la, la secuencia, digamos, normal que nosotros le daríamos. ¿Verdad? All the money, subject. ¿Verdad? We had lost. ¿Verdad? Was on the table. We have, uh, bueno, prácticamente es un solo, un solo bloque de un solo, una sola frase eh, nominal al principio, right? And then the verb, okay? So we use uh, also inversion not only with the verb position, but also with the clause, o de las dos partes de, que tenemos en la cláusula, de la dependiente y la independiente, que son como interchangeable. Okay, and that's a little bit, you know, about it. And then in number four, we can use inversion after so plus adjective that. So beautiful was the girl that nobody could talk of anything else, right? It says bien poco común, pero si lo van a encontrar en libros, right? So beautiful was the girl that nobody could talk uh, of anything else. And what would be the, the normal sequence? Well, the normal sequence would be was so uh, the girl, I'm sorry, the girl. I said the girl was so beautiful that nobody could talk of anything else. Pero deciden darle la inversión. So beautiful was the girl that nobody could talk about anything else, right? Then we have the next one. Um, so delicious, right? So delicious was the food that we ate every last bite, right? So the normal sequence would be, the food was so delicious, right? That we ate every last bite, okay? So that's a little bit about inversion. Obviously, this is just an idea, right? The topic is, it's more complex. Es más complejo de lo que parece, ¿verdad? Pero eh, if you have the phrases, si usted tiene las frases, Y eso sí, tiene que saberse o recordar bien cuáles son las formas en pregunta de los tenses, ¿verdad? Porque si no tenemos esa forma, si no nos acordamos de la secuencia de pregunta, entonces pues ahí nos puede, nos puede eh, fallar, ¿verdad? No sé si tiene alguna pregunta, Marcella. Ahorita que ya leímos, no sé si ya hay más preguntas puntuales o al resto de ustedes, chicos. So we can, we should. Uh, learn about adverse tense, are there? That's correct. Are there what? Uh, those are adverse of frequency. Pero en realidad, ah, uh -huh, but actually, um, it, it, it goes beyond. O sea, vamos allá porque estamos hablando ya de, como le digo, de <laughs> adverse phrases, right? Ah, uh, yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that, uh, yeah. But I get it. I understand more now. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And as you see, right, so it depends on the usage. Prácticamente vimos cuatro usos. The first one is to emphasize and, and to make my sentence not noticeable, que es común, ¿verdad? Uh, then uh, uh, the second point was, uh, let me see, where is it? But it's not common in uh, normal conversation. Number two, yes, it's normal. Number it's one, uh -huh, not that much, but number two, it's it's more normal. Uh -huh. mm, and I have heard it. No, no todos lo usan, pero sí le he escuchado, se le he escuchado a varias personas. Uh -huh. hay, hay, hay personas que se acostumbran a usarlo así, to be honest. Right? En mi caso, yo no me acostumbro a hacerlo, a hacerlo, a hacerlo a, como a decirlo de esa forma, right? Um, but for instance, uh, my husband is a teacher and he prefers this way, so he uses inversions inversions a lot, right? So it depends how you feel comfortable. But this one, number two, it's 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 formal, but it's more common in uh, speaking. Mm -hmm. And then uh, use three. Right, whenever we have inversion in two cl uh, with, with clauses. So if we have, you know, um, inversion in two clauses, 
pr pretty much what we do is just to uh, say what we would say at the end at the beginning. And then the last one, it's uh, so plus adjective plus that. También bien poco común, pero se puede encontrar en libros o lectures, etc. De los que vimos, Marce, probably the second one is the most common one. The second use. Mm -hmm. With conditional, right? Correct, with the conditionals, exactly. That's the most common one. Mm -hmm. And anyone else? Or any question related to what we have studied? Any comments? No? Okay. So if you don't have any questions, I'm going to finish um, the presentation that I brought yesterday. Give me one moment. <clears throat> So yesterday we were talking a little bit about simple past and I stopped right um, in regular verbs, right? The regular verbs and we have also the affirmative negative and question uh, form. But one of the things that I mentioned yesterday, right, has to do with the pronunciation of verbs, right? And I don't know, were you able to, um, to watch the video yesterday, guys, the one that I shared with you? No? No lo vieron. Okay. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be the same. Uh, it will be better if you uh, watch the video, but pretty much the summary of the video, it's related to voiceless and voiced sounds, okay? So the past simple uh, pronunciation of it endings, right, will be like this. If there's no vibration on the throat, right? If there is no vibration, so that is going to be voiceless sound or a voiceless sound, okay? So in this case, if I have Vibration. Si yo pongo mi mano en la garganta y al emitir ese sonido vibra, entonces tenemos un voiced sound. Si no vibra, entonces tenemos un voiceless sound. Voiceless would be que solo es aire que pasa, pero no produce sonido, ¿verdad? Y voiced sería, pues, el, el aire que pasa produciendo un sonido específico para ese, para ese símbolo. ¿Cuáles son los que son voiceless sounds? No son letras. Déjeme decirle. Lo que eh, a veces nosotros decimos es que si termina en tal letra, en tal consonante. No, no son letras. Son sounds. Well, the first sound is... If you produce a sound and if you put your hand on your throat and if you feel, there's no vibration. So, right? Right? Todos esos son voiceless sounds. Teacher, ¿y dónde saco esos sonidos? Bueno, si yo veo un verbo y no sé cómo se pronuncia fonéticamente, I have to go to the dictionary. Right? You need to go to the dictionary and locate, you know, the type of symbol that you see there. If you see any of these sounds, so that's going to be voiceless. Okay? So the sounds are right? En este de abajo es como en victory. Right? Then we have the second one. Right? And we have if you pronounce that sound, you will feel the bright vibration on your throat. Right? So the first sounds, again, I'm going to begin sound, like just air, right? And V, V, V sound, like a victory, right? Loved, right? Then we have sound and Z. Then we have P and B, 
sound. We have t and t, right? We have k, and then we have k, that sound, which is very difficult, but it's like, es un nasal, es un nasal, and that would be something like in long k, k, k right? Then, then we have sh, right? Z, ese sí tiene vibración, z, z, right? Z, el de arriba es sh, right? Then we have sh, and z, like in um, leisure, leisure, z, right? So if we see the difference between all the sounds, right? And esto es incluyendo todos los vowel sounds, okay? Que son a, E, I, O, U, right? If we have dif these sounds, those voiceless, entonces we're going to pronounce it like this. That's going to be stop, right? Complete, kick, laugh, on earth, keys, fish, watch. Ah, ahora sí, teacher, eso sí, ya los he visto, ¿verdad? Pero ese es el problema, que nosotros nos acordamos del, de las letras, pero no del, 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 del símbolo del sonido, right? Entonces, we need to have the symbol clear and the sound too, right? Entonces, todos los que vemos acá son voiceless. Stop, complete, kick, laugh, on earth. Keys, finish, and watched. So there you have the sounds, right? Right? So those are sounds. Then the other ones are these, okay? Rub, decide, flag, love, base, amaze. Damage, dodge, right? So those are the sounds that we have, like in rob, decide, flag, love, B sound, right? Base, amaze, damage, right? And dodge. Right, those are the sounds. This is what happens. Well, I have three different sounds, right? I have final voiced sound D. So whenever I have voiced sounds, in este caso que serían estos, their pronunciation at the end is going to be D with a D pronunciation. O una D lo representa ese sonido, right? If I have the um, voiceless sounds, I'm going to have t pronunciation, right? Va a ser una t, right? And then if I have verbs ending in it, um, um, I, I mean, ed, that's going to be id, como in need, needed, right? Entonces veamos acá los sonidos. Uh, final voiced sounds, cold, cold. Clean, cleaned, love, loved, enjoyed, enjoyed, offer, offered, you see? Now with the final voiced sounds, we have the sound T, right? T. Help, helped. Look, k -k. looked. T. Wash, sh. washed, watched. Laugh. Laughed, kissed, kissed, 
Now, for the last one, como yo ya sé que solo los que terminan en D y en T, um, I'll, be, I'll be able to go ahead and um, um, add the, ex, the extra syllable, porque esa es una sílaba extra que el verbo no tenía antes de convertirse en pasado, right? Si yo digo, I need, I need a computer for my class. I need una sílaba, monosílabo, need. Pero si yo digo, I needed a computer for my class, entonces ahí agregué una extra sílaba, needed. Something, we add that extra portion there. So, need, needed, want, wanted, decide, decided, complete, completed. Visit, visit it, right? So the, this is like the summary of the, um, you know, the, the video, right? So the idea here is that you remember that those are the sounds that you need to respect, right? Entonces, si quieren, le voy, a, le voy a pasar uno de los sonidos here in the chat. Eso sí. Ahí está. Give me a moment. I'm going to share it with you here. And I'm going to share with you this one too. So you can remember the letters. And there you go. Okay. So do you have any questions, guys? Preguntas? Questions? Any questions? Okay, very good. And the last part, don't forget that um, for the second part in verb, uh, I mean, in simple past, we have the irregular forms, right? And well, as you know, you need to handle these and at least to learn them by heart, right? There are plenty of lists available online. I think uh, I can share with you one if you like, but it is important that we handle them because it's it's good that we already know how to use, you know, the regular verbs in past. But I could hear uh, in some occasions when you were expressing your examples that, you know, there are some verbs that we need to uh, double check, right, when it comes to the past participle form, right, and, and the simple past form, both, right, so it is uh, recommended to uh, read or at least to memorize the base form, the simple past form, and the past participle form, uh, uh, I mean, de un solo, ¿verdad? so you don't have to go section by section, and if you feel that you have trouble with it, just print one, Print a list and just stick it on the wall, right? And and try to look at it um, whenever you are wondering, you know, um, with your eyes. So just look at the, at the list and try to memorize some of them. So guys, I'm going to stop here because time's up. I'm going to pass the attendance and we're going to finish the class then, okay? So al padir por tal días. Eh, Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present teacher. Thank you. Eh, Ana Francisca G García Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Present. Thank you. Eh, Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank Present. you. El Thank you. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. I ah, see, sí, no, no puedo venir. El... Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you. Eh, Jaime, no, Francisco Antonio Sánchez Jovel. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you. Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. 
Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Present. Thank you, Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present, teacher. Thank you, Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. María Susana Ayala de Flores. Present. Thank you, Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Nady Ibis Méndez Salveño. Present, teacher. Thank you, Rafael Antonio Morales Martínez. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Rosa María de Milagro Pérez de Paz. Sandra, oh, gracias. Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present, teacher. Thank you, eh, Jensi Marlene León López. Present, teacher. Thank you, and Suma Beatriz Perez Galdames. Present. Thank you, guys. Well, thank you very much. We have ended your uh, dance level one. So don't forget to um, keep an eye right on the information that they will be sharing with you. Uh, for the next uh, module. So guys, thank you very much for joining every single class and you have a good night and see you around. Okay. Good night. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. You're welcome, guys. Good night. Good night.